has given to me to do the thing that I love most. And that has been to study and talk about literature. Truly, my greatest happiness in the world has been to sit around a table with students and to read great literature and to discuss the deep meanings of that literature. Today I would like to tell you a few stories and my memories from the past 16 years and 10 months at Baikou Gakuin University while relating those experiences to some of the great works of literature that we've studied. I'd like to start off by mentioning the novella Daisy Miller by Henry James, which we have often read in my American literature classes. Daisy Miller was a young American woman whose family had suddenly become rich and therefore they were part of the nouveau riche class of Americans. Nouveau riche is a French term which is borrowed into English and it means newly rich, newly rich. So Daisy's family was newly rich, part of the nouveau riche, but Daisy had not had the benefit of a good liberal arts education. Uh, Daisy was basically a good person, but she was not well educated, and she did not understand the ways of the world. Thus, when she went to Europe, which has completely different values from Americans, she got into trouble in her social relations. She thought she could continue to practice her American values in European society, but sadly, the lessons that she learned through her experience came too late to save her. ヘンリー・ジェームスのデイジー・ミラーという小説に勉強して、研究しつつお話を始めたいと思います。デイジー・ミラーは若いアメリカ人の女性で、外で
彼女は社会的な関係に問題を抱えます彼女はヨーロッパ社会においてもアメリカ人として持っていた価値観を持ち続けることができると考えましたが法にも自分自身の経験を通して得た経験教訓は彼女を救う前に生きなかったのです、well. When I came to Japan in October 1996, in many ways, I was like Daisy Miller. <laughs> I knew about American culture, but I knew absolutely nothing about Japanese culture. Really, I didn't even know how to say arigato gozaimasu.、Uh, I remember in my first few days at the Umegato campus,、uh, I walked into the main office. And at that time, Mr. Shimono, Was there. And he made this hand motion to me, like that. So I turned around and left. And to me, in my culture, this means go away. We use this gesture to shoo away animals or annoying children. <laughs> go away, go away. So after this happened the third time, he did this, and I left. A young secretary came to me and said, My boss wants to know why every time he asks you to come here, <laughs> you turn around and leave. So it was at that moment that I learned that that gesture in Japan means to come here. And this was just one of hundreds of examples of my beginning to learn a new code of behavior. <laughs> 私が初めて日本に来たとき、いろいろな意味で私はデイジー・ミラーのようでした。アメリカの文化については精通していましたが、日本の文化について何も知識がなかったのです。ありがとうございますという言葉すらどのように使うのか知りませんでした。まだ日本に来て間もない頃、私はウメガトキャンパスで事務室,事務室をしました。当時、下野さんはそこで勤められていて、私に向かってこのような注意をしました。招き猫のように手を動かす注意をしました。それを見て私は引き返し、その場を去りました。アメリカ人の私にとって、その手続はたくさんあることを共有するのです。動物や子供を追い払うとき、このような動作をします。あっちに行って。私にはどうして下野さんが私を追い払おうとしているのかがわからなかったのですがこのあと3度ほど同じことを繰り返し若い人の方が私のところへやってきて彼のもとへ来るようにお願いしているのにどうして毎回引き返し去ってしまうのかわからないと下野さんはおっしゃっ,おっ,しゃっていたと教えてくれましたこの時初めて招き猫のように手を動かす手振りがそちらへ来てという意味であるということを学びましたこれは私がどのように行動することが期待されているのかを学んだ経験の一例です。As you know from reading works by Mark Twain, such as The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Americans enjoy the humor of playing tricks. For example, Huck plays a trick on Jim. Jim is deathly afraid of snakes, and Huck kills a rattlesnake. And then puts it in Jim's bed as a joke. But the joke backfires when the snake's mate comes along and bites Jim. Well, one day in Japan, I decided to play a trick on Mr. Shimono. <laughs>、uh, I have here a, a little sack. You know, it says rattlesnake eggs. It says, caution, keep in cool place to prevent hatching. So, but all it is, it's a little wire and it's got a little rubber band on it. And you roll it up really, really, really tight, as tight as you can roll it. Let me just take a minute and roll this up real tight.、Uh, so, so then, you know, you put it here in the sack. Like this.、Uh, so I prepared that and then, then I took it into the office and I said, Here, Mr. Shimono, isn't this interesting? So he took it from me and he was, he was looking at it and he said, Oh, well, I'll do it. 
he yelled and he jumped, and I think his his head almost hit the ceiling. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I couldn't stop laughing. I, it, that was just so funny to me. Uh, but of course, my trick backfired because after that, Mr. Shimono tended to avoid me. Our <laughs> <laughs> pass across. マークトウェインという作家の作るべき日の冒険などの作品を読んだことのある方はご存知かと思いますが、アメリカ人は面白いいたずらを聞くものです。例えば、ハックは自分にいたずらをします。自分はヘビが台の苦手なのですが、ハ
綺麗な言葉のリズムを味わうことの重要さを学びましたその後私の文学の授業では学生と交互に音読するようになり音を聞きリズムを繰り返すことで学生は自然なリズムを身につけることができたのではないかと思います That is one of the many beauties of literature, the sound. But the second beauty of literature is the sense. You know, the ancient Greek and Roman civilizations perished. And all we have left of those civilizations is the literature. The literature is what survived. And through that great literature, we can understand how people lived how people thought, and the values that people had. And we can understand that the basic human values of good versus evil are the same then as they are now. And it is often through literature that we learn these values. <laughs> ロマの文明を創立しましたが、その文明のうち今日も私たちの手元に残っているのが文学です。文学は切り抜けて生き残りました。その素晴らしい文学を通して私たちは人々がどのように生き、何を考え、何に価値を見出していたのかを知ることができ